In this video, I'll be showing you step-by-step step the fastest way to add your custom GPTs to any website. This has been a highly requested video because many of you have created awesome GPTs in the builder, but you want to break them out of the ChatGPT site and start using them in the real world. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand the enormous value of GPTs because they are missing a key part of OpenAI's vision that no one is talking about right now. So by the end of the video, you'll not only know exactly how to put your GPTs onto websites, but you'll also understand exactly how OpenAI has really laid out the path for all of us to build and sell GPTs that integrate into every part of our world so that you can pounce on this incredible new opportunity before others catch on. If you're new to the channel and don't know who I am, my name is Liam Otley and I run my own six-figure AI development company called Morningside AI. And I also run the largest community of AI agency owners in the world, where my students learn how to make money by selling AI solutions to businesses, just like the website chatbot that you're about to build. Let's get into it. The first thing that you need to understand before getting stuck into building this is the difference between the GPTs that you can build on the ChatGPT website and the GPTs that you can build with OpenAI's Assistance API. The GPTs that you can create on the ChatGPT site are best understood as consumer toys. They are cool little gimmicky things that allow people to come on and do this like setup experience where they can add some knowledge and build these GPTs and put them on a marketplace. But you need to understand that that is, is sort of one area and on, on one side of this entire equation. The other side is the Assistance API and the real powerful assistant that you can create and operate programmatically. So the ChatGPT ones that you build on the ChatGPT website cannot be operated programmatically. You can set them up, you can save them in your little sidebar, but you can't actually start to call those programmatically, which is why you're watching this video because you don't know how to take that functionality and put it elsewhere. That's what the assistance API is for. This is the business facing product. So we have the consumer side, and then we have the business facing side of this, this GPT product, and that is created through the Assistance API. What the Assistance API allows you to do is all of the things you do on the, on the ChatGPT builder side of things, but allows you to set things up programmatically. And then once you have created an assistant with this, which I'm going to show you in this video, once you've created that assistant, you can then make calls to it in the same way that you used to make calls to the ChatGPT API. You can create your assistant, you can give it knowledge, you can give it functions. And once that's created, you can call that assistant and ask for responses from it and use those within your application. So what we're doing in this video is creating an assistant using the Assistance API that I've templated all for you guys to copy so you don't have to worry about writing code. But we'll create an assistant, we'll connect it to a chatbot builder, and then we're going to be able to take that and put it onto a website that's going to be accessible through a little chat bubble widget that you're probably used to by now. For anyone who is looking to make the most of this opportunity that is GPTs, you need to understand the assistance API and how this is going to be used in real world applications. And don't get too distracted by this GPTs thing and the, and the GPT store and stuff like that. While it might be great, the real value and real impact of the GPTs release will be created through this assistance API, which you're gonna get a crash course on now. With that out of the way, we can get into exactly what we are building today and how. So we are creating a custom knowledge chatbot. And in this case, the custom knowledge chatbot is going to be a, a sales rep training assistant. So we're going to give it custom knowledge on training documentation for our business so that the sales reps and the junior sales reps in particular can talk to this chatbot to get information about the business on what offers they can sell, how much things cost, what methods they should use, etc. So custom knowledge chatbot, and we're going to be taking that functionality, creating it with the assistance API, and then putting that onto a website with a little bubble in the corner that can be interacted with. The actual implementation of this is going to consist of two parts. We are going to create this functionality by firstly creating a replet that creates our assistance for us and manages the conversations back and forth. And then we're going to connect that replet to VoiceFlow as our front end. So we're going to make API calls from VoiceFlow to our replet and so they can talk back and forth with each other. And then we can start getting our conversations through a nice chat interface that anyone can use on our website. To get started, you need to clone my replet. As always, I've done all of the code and I've written everything for you. So you can just plug and play my replet and copy it and you can get up and running in a couple of minutes. So it's gonna be available in the first link in the description. You'll be able to sign up to my resource hub. And then inside the resource hub, you'll be able to find a link to this replet. Once you're on the screen, you can go up to the top right and click this fork button. Then we can call it uh, GPT2 website and just save it there. We can fork this. It's going to create a copy of everything that I've done. Once it loads in, you should see this screen here. Now I'm gonna take you through a quick tour of how I've set this up so you're fully aware of what's going on without needing to do any changes or modifications. So in this case, I have my knowledge document that I've uploaded. Uh, it looks like it's all scrambled here, but the machine can understand it. I've uploaded my knowledge document, which is the training information for uh, the solar business and that the sales reps are gonna be able to chat and back and forth with. So I've uploaded the knowledge document here. You have the main.py file where we have our API endpoints that we'll be able to talk to from VoiceFlow. 
So there's one here to start the conversation and create a new thread. Then there's one that we'll send our user queries off to, to process and send back to us. So I won't get stuck in the weeds here too much. You can take a look over it as you'd like, or even paste this into ChatGPT and ask it for some help breaking down and understanding how this works. That might be a good learning experience for you as well. But the high level of it is that we have this create assistant function here. And when we run this app for the first time, it's going to look in this left hand column here and see if there's a file called assistance.json. If there isn't one, it's going to create you a new assistant based off these instructions here. So this is the Smith Solar Sales Assistant and I have the instructions for it here. So these are the instructions that you have when you put into the GPT Builder on the ChatGPT website. This is the prompting and a sort of explanation of what it's supposed to do. If you are following along, but you want to do it differently with your own use case, this is what you need to modify. So you can change the information here to prompt it into a different role. Here, I have set up the retrieval tool. So if you want to have a custom knowledge base and add in a document like I have, you just need to leave this as is. So that's the retrieval, sort of the knowledge retrieval feature. And then what this function is gonna do is send all of that information off to the assistance API, create you a new assistant up in the, in the, up in the ether, and it's going to return back the ID for that assistant. And we're going to save that assistant into uh, a file on the left-hand panel here called assistance.json, and that's going to save the ID so that we can later recall it. And every time you run this over again, you won't need to create a new assistant, which is going to cost you a lot in API usage. So it's going to store that assistant ID and it's going to reload that every time when you restart this application. So it's going to save you a ton of money. All you need to do to get this thing up and running now is to go to the bottom left to secrets and you'll see OpenAI API key up on the right here. You need to go to OpenAI's website and either create or get your existing key. Come back here and hit the edit button and paste in your API key and save it. And then we should be good to go and run this thing for the first time. Now, if I click on the run button here, it's going to boot everything up and it's going to create the assistant because there's no assistant.json in the left-hand panel here. So you should see assistant.json appears. Great, I'm not going to open it up because you'll see my assistant key, but inside that file is going to be the ID of the assistant that you just created with those settings. So with the prompting settings that you gave it and with that knowledge base, you've created a new assistant and it's up there ready for you to talk to in future. Next, we need to create the chatbot that allows us to interact with our assistant programmatically via the API endpoints that we have set up on our replit. What we're going to be using is my favorite bot building platform called Voiceflow, which is something I use daily at my AI development company as well. So this stuff is really solid and I really back it for you guys to learn how to use this as well. The link to sign up to Voiceflow will be available in the description. So then once you're here, you can log in and create an account. And then once you're inside, what you're going to need to do is download the template file that I've created for you. It's going to be available in the resource hub in the description. So again, Go down to the description, you can sign up to my resource hub and inside will be the Replit template. There'll also be the VoiceFlow template as well. So you need to go in there, download that file and then come back. Even if you're not copying exactly the use case that I'm doing, this is still a very good base for you guys to be able to plug in any kind of assistance APIs that you want to into these kind of custom, custom front-end chatbots that you can put on websites. So once you've downloaded that, you come back here and you can click the import.vf file up in the top right. And then obviously load in the file that you've just downloaded. We can click open assistant on the right here. And just like that, you've got all of the work that I've done already for you that allows you to just plug and play the Replit functionality into this voice flow. Just to take you through what this chatbot does. Firstly, we have a get request to our start URL. If we go back to Replit, you can see we have in our main.py file, we have our app root, which is start. And what this is going to do is sort of initialize the conversation and create a new thread. So under your assistance, you have threads, which are basically conversations. Threads allow you to store memory and retrieve it later on. So whenever we start a new conversation, we need to create a new thread. And that's what this is doing here. We are going to create a get request and then we're going to save the thread ID. And every time the user sends a message to the chatbot, we're able to take the thread ID that we created at the start of the conversation. And then we're able to take the message as well and send all of that off to our chat endpoint, which again, if you go back to the main file, we have the chat one here. So we have the start conversation with creates a thread. And then we have the chat endpoint, which is going to generate a response. I know that might seem complex for you, but I promise as soon as you get this Repl template set up, you're able to make these little tweaks and you get this running, then this is going to be very easy for you to sort of understand how this whole system works. So we are actually very close to seeing this in action now. All we need to do is go back to Replit and on the right side here, you'll see this web view that popped up. If you click on the new tab button here on the right, it will pop up in a new window and it will give you the URL, the address of where your server is currently running. So we can copy this and go over to VoiceFlow again. And now we just need to update the URLs in our request so we can replace this entire thing paste this in here and this one needs to be slash start so your url and then it should be slash start so this is a start conversation and then here if i paste this in here again and go slash chat those are the two different endpoints that we need to be calling all of this should be set up and ready for you to go now all we need to do to test this is click on the run button up in the top right if i click run test 
you want to allow me to start the chat with our assistant. So, hi, I'm Dale, Smith Solar Sales Rep Assistant. How can I help you today? Um, what discounts do we have available? And this is a question about some of the information that is in this source material that I provided. So we'll see what it comes back with. Great, at Smith Solar, we have various discounts available, early bid discount, referral discount, cash discounts, etc. As we can see, it is outputting from my custom knowledge base. I can even ask it another question. I can say, uh, what are our finance options? And test it again. At the moment, these assistance API calls run quite slow. So if you want to keep an eye on how this is actually the process and progress of the, the call in the back end, what you can do is come back over to Replit and whenever you run it, you'll see in this bottom right hand corner where it's, it's logging what it's doing. So, okay, I received a request to create a new thread. Okay, I created the thread, here's the ID. Okay, now I'm in the process of generating an answer. I'm in progress and progress and progress. Run completed, here's the answer. So if you need any help debugging what's going on or any issues that are happening, I've written this code in a way that allows you to see what's happening in real time within the console here. So just a handy tip for you if you need any help or you run into any issues. Since we have the functionality working nicely here in VoiceFlow, we are good to take this and put it onto our website now, which is super easy. And one of the reasons I love VoiceFlow is because of this functionality as well. Go, all I need to do is click on the publish button in the top right. I don't need to give it a name. Wait for it to publish. And now I can click on this embed widget settings. On the screen, we have three parts. Firstly, the installation, which is the code that we're gonna put on the website in a second. But then you can also modify the appearance of it. So you can see on the right, I've made it look kind of nice already and on brand with a kind of solar company. I've called it Smith Solar Assistant. And I put a description here, which are these two things here. And then I've also customized the appearance with some coloring and I've put a little logo thing on it as well. So it looks quite nice. I think it's fairly on brand for what a solar company might look like. What I need to do now is copy this code and take it over to the website. For the sake of this tutorial, I've just downloaded a website template off the internet so that I can show you what this looks like in action. This is a website code. Don't need to look at any of it really. This is going to be your website code or the website code that you want to put this chatbot onto. You need to scroll down to the bottom of the, the main file, whichever it may be. And just before the end in this sort of script section, you should see a bunch of different scripts here. You can just paste it in between some of these. So I can paste that in there. Then my JavaScript code that puts that little bubble on the website is now installed. I can save this file, I can click this and run a live preview and we'll see what it looks like. So here's the template website I've just pulled off the internet, but in the bottom right hand corner, you can see there's the bubble, up it pops, Smith Solar Assistant. Hi, I'm Dale Smith Solar Sales Rep. How can I help you today? Um, what uh, are our financing options? And there we have it, a working custom GPT using our own knowledge base, put onto a website, using VoiceFlow and Replit and using the Assistance API. This is only just scratching the surface of what is possible with the Assistance API. For this video, I actually had to take out a ton of features to keep it as simple and straightforward to explain as possible. I'm actually going to be releasing a full length tutorial going into depth on everything related to the Assistance API and how you can build GPTs for businesses and start selling them to really start making money and capitalizing on this new opportunity before everyone else wakes up to what I've just shown you in this video. So if you want to be a part of that, you want to stay in the loop, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I have a ton more content like this coming that shows you how to make money from this new technology. And if you want to join my AI Business Accelerator where I'm teaching my community and my students how to make money with this opportunity and with this exact same thing you've seen in this video, you can join that in the link in the description as well. But remember, if you want free access to all of the resources mentioned here, the Ripple template, the knowledge base document, and also the voice flow template, it's all gonna be available in the first link in the description on my resource hub, which is completely free. And if you're not already in my free Telegram, I'm dropping a ton of game in there on this exact topic and everything related to GPT. So if you wanna get some free value and free game on what we're doing here, you can get access to my Telegram in the description as well. If you're interested in learning more about my thoughts on the GPT's release and what it means for AI businesses, you can take a look at the video which is available here. But aside from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.